It is just after 7 a.m. I've only been eating oatmeal and fruit, and we're all packed up with bike gear. That only means one thing. We must be off to a race. Welcome back, everybody. As you can gather from the introduction, we were off to the races. We packed up the car, headed over to Washington County, and we checked out the Sweetwater Bikes Whiskey Rebellion Gravel Race. There was five different distances you could compete in. 35K, 60, 90, 120, and 200K. Now, I only did the SIP distance, which is the 35K, as advertised, just to get a little taste of what it was all about and bring a little bit of information to you. The course ended up being about 44 kilometers, which equates to about 27 miles. And it was plenty for me to get my taste of what exactly this kind of gravel race and what this area has to offer. So I did this event on my Soma Double Cross, which you saw me build up last year in a different video. I'll post that link here, so if you wanna get a quick look at that. Didn't really do anything special for this event, just uh, had the bike packed up with some storage, enough snacks, enough water, at least I thought so. But let's go and let's talk to some other racers and see how they were getting ready. All right, I'm standing here with my buddy Mikey. Mikey, what distance are you doing today? I am doing uh, the 90K. 90, is, 90K, that's insane. It, it's actually close to 100K because it's in the mid 60 mileage. I don't know how exactly how many miles in the 60s it is. And if you think that's far, there's people here racing 200K. If you don't know how many miles that are, do the math, it'll be good for you. But it's insanely long. The elevation on their route brings them up to over 12,000 feet of climbing. <laughs> which is astronomical, and they're gonna be in the pain cave the whole time. Luckily, I only have about 2,300 feet because I'm doing the short distance. This is just supposedly for fun, as much fun as that can be. How much elevation do you have? About five and a half thousand, I think. Yeah, there's gonna be some lactic acid today. And, uh, well, good luck. See you out there. Thank you. <laughs> By the time I got there, the 200K and 120K racers were already on course and out for the day. So that only leaves one thing left. Apply plenty of sunscreen, apply a little bit of crotch cream, and head over to the start line. All right, I am standing here with... Matt Imhoff. Matt Imhoff. He's taking care of the timing, a lot of the organization, everything going on. How many people you said were here? We have 437 registered and just about 400 showed up. 400 showed up? Cool. Yeah. So coming over here, there's the radars to pick up the timing chips. Oh, damn. Hey oh. Here is the start and finish line. There is where your timing chip will be picked up. We can see some of the brains going there. And here's the secret squirrel van. If you worked in the CIA, this is where you do all your surveillance from. Yep, yep. All right, we well. Got, we got out here at 4.30 this morning to set up, and we'll be here till 6 o'clock tonight. It's a long day today. Oh, yeah. And uh, we can already tell it's only, it's only 9.30 right now. The temperatures are already on the climb. I think that's kind of a detail of this event, is it always ends up being one of the warmest weekends around. So, uh, Hope everyone out there has their water. Let's have some fun. Thank you and thank you. These events would not happen without volunteers helping out. These aid stations, they're the only reason you'll finish. At least for me. All right, SIP Distance Warriors, make some noise. Woo! So excited. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. On your mark. Get set. Go! <laughs>
Okay, I'm only about four miles in so far. We hit the true first gravel road. There's a peak of it. There's some other people from my division, some from the faster guys, and a couple e-bikes blowing us away. At this point on the last hill, I'm not even a jealous of e-bikes. I just kind of wish I had one. All right, let's get at it. Okay, we just turned onto another road. This one is, looks like fresher loose pack gravel. As long as you can get in a tire line, which is not a very good one, it's not bad. Other than that, it is uh, pretty loose and slick. You have to be careful on the descent. In between the gravel, there are road sections. You can probably make up time here. But also, there's nothing flat. So the smooth road is actually the only time you have to back off and recover it. So you have the energy for the next gravel hill climb. So, we're just gonna spin to win the hills. I'm trying to make it up later. See what I'm doing here? This is called walking. This is an advanced technique that they only teach the pros and a little, little less than I learned. There's no shame in this game. You see the hill behind me? It's gonna keep going. Walking. Another section of road downhill. Oh, free speed. miles left not too much let's finish it up what's your name Chris have you ever done this event before no not at all no I've done zero gravel rides before what do you think of it so far it's fun I could uh, go with a little less hills but uh, you know I guess it's like learning to swim sometimes you've got to jump in the pool and see what happens but uh, if you'll notice He's using the same technique I've been applying on the bigger hills. <laughs> it's the pro technique, the walk. Absolutely. These hills just keep going. Four miles to go, and uh, this race is hard. So much elevation, and you're never off the gas. Whew. Sometimes if I get out of the saddle and I try to uh, pedal on harder, you can feel how the, uh, the bite of a cramp is trying to grab on the thighs. Whew. All right, 4.2 to go. Let's hit it. Just hit the last piece of pavement. Got about two and a half miles to the finish line, and then we're done. Phew! Yeah!
No, I got you a camera. <laughs> well, what do you think of the event so far? Now, don't be fooled. There are some key sections of this race, even at the SIP distance, that I was not able to get on video. Uh, because it was an endurance race, I wasn't going to wear the uh, chest cam strap and keep the camera mounted there. I wanted to be able to get enough wind on me, cool me down. So I was just uh, hand-holding the camera as we went. Because of the way this race is, and I'm on 700C by 35 tires, these back roads were nasty enough. There was not a chance in hell I was taking my hands off these bars while going down them. Going up them, well, all you're going to do is hear me wheeze unless I was walking, which you saw. Yeah, but going down them, I probably would have been better off on some actual 29er mountain bike wheels. Uh, some of these roads, if it's the loose gravel, you're pretty much surfing on top of it. As soon as your speed gets up past like 15 miles an hour, you can just feel your bike starting to skate on top of the gravel. And on the other sections where it's even chunkier, you're pulling line selection like it's a cross country race. Uh, so now the race is done, grab a little bit of food. One of the cool parts about gravel racing is, I almost want to call it a gravel event and not racing. Yes, there's people there that are super competitive, but everybody there is having a good time and it's probably the lowest overall ego base that I've ever seen at a bike event ever. Let's go talk to some people now. All right, we rode a little bit together on the course. Now yep. that it's all done, how do you feel? I feel a lot better now. You know, a beer and a bottle of water in, I feel great. Uh, definitely looking forward to next year now, but I think if you had asked me half an hour ago, I uh, would have felt a little different, but. So uh, are you gonna do the, think you'll do the same distance or different distance? I'm gonna do the next one up next year. Bump it up to 60? Yeah, I think so, I think so. All right. That's crazy. What about you? How come you're not doing this? <laughs> I'm a runner, not a cyclist. Oh. I do the running. What's the matter? Your bike broken? Uh, it, it's actually not the right bike for this one. Legitimate. <laughs> he told me my, my bike would be broken yeah. if I did do this one. Yeah. So I need to get a different bike for it. I think she might be smarter than both of us for I just saying so. that. I think so. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the words. Yeah, no problem. Whose bright idea out of this group was it? This guy right here. All right. So you made the challenge to all your friends. Did you shit talk him into doing it or was it gentle coaxing? Gentle coaxing. Coaxing? Co co uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, Gentle co coaxing. Yeah, I was trying to do two words at once. It didn't work either. Yeah. All right. So what do you think of it? It was a lot of fun. Yeah? Yeah. You going to do it again next year? Oh, yeah. Same distance or longer? Depends on how early I get out and start riding <laughs> that season. All right. So you guys, what? uh? It's like the, the right amount of distance for me. I, think I, I could go for a little bit more. I'm used to riding some hills in the city, so down for a little bit more that's good i agree let's do more next year boys doing the next one up and at the 60. that's right oh, yeah. all right oh nope you're not getting stronger you're getting weaker oh, yeah. <laughs> gummy boys Definitely. i'll be i'll be meeting up with him for the sip again next year <laughs> yeah, we have a plug that's all right. at, gummy, <laughs> at gummy boys on instagram at gummy boys on instagram all right check it out, check us out. thanks guys yes i'm mikey i uh am from pittsburgh and I finished the 90K, it was fairly brutal. It was a, a really difficult race to decide to do after 20 years of not racing. But I had a great time, and that's what, what's important. What, uh, what bike you do it on here? It is a Cervelo C2 in 47 centimeters, so it's almost a miniature bicycle to most people. What size tires did you run? I ran 32 Maxxis Refuse. Um, they didn't have a questionable performance, but they can't make my legs any stronger. <laughs> uh, would you do this again? Yes, I will be doing this again next. Same year. distance, or are you going to bump it up? Same distance. I'm Just not going to bump. Try it up. to beat your I'm existing time. To bump it up. <laughs> All right. What do you think, old timer? I had a great time. I just <laughs> sat. I just enjoyed it. Sat around and had a sandwich. All right. Sounds like the way to go. Yep. All right. It is thanks, the way guys. To go. Hey, my name's Ted King Smith. Uh, King Ted to some, but not Ted King. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I just did the 120. It was real hard. Uh, this is one of the hardest gravel races I think you'll ever do. I've ever done. Uh, a lot of loose gravel, a lot of really steep uphills and downhills, a lot of exposure, a lot of heat. It's always hot for some reason. 
That seems to be the, uh, the, the theme, especially last year, I think, was the hottest, earliest weekend of the year. What, uh, what kind of bike are you, you doing on here? What do we got? Oh, man, this is a crazy hodgepodge. This is a habanero uh, titanium disc cross hodgepodge steel f commuter fork. Uh, it gets the job done. You know. All right, thank you. Yeah, man, I feel like a celebrity. All right, so I came over to interview these two because you see that thing in the, at the tandem. They raced it on a tandem. All right, so who are you guys? Go ahead. I'm Tyler Quinn. This is Sally my, Sherman. My wife, Sally Sherman. Yeah, We're Jerry. with Full Psych Adventure Team. Um, oh. We did that 90K today, right? 100K, <laughs> like 62 miles or so. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how long in advance did you know you were going to do this on a tandem? Well, we are taking this bike to the Leadville 100 in Colorado in August. So we're signed up for a couple races this summer to just really test it out and just see how hard we can push for how long. So this is the second race we've done on it. We usually ride it on single track, which is a lot of fun. So uh, we usually ride it like a mountain bike. We'll have to get some footage of that sometime. Yes, you will. <laughs> so being that it's two people on a tandem bike, is it both because you're half insane and added up your have a little sanity or you have both completely lost it? Well, we've always said that if we could combine the strengths of each of us, we would be a great athlete. He just is really, really strong in areas where I'm not and then vice versa. So when you put that together, sort of when, when one person's feeling a little bit slow or low, the other person can kind of pick them up. So it seems like we make a good team, yeah. which is why we got married. Yeah. We didn't fight on the bike, so no. that's good. We don't that's fight. probably well. not something all couples could do. <laughs> uh, let's do a panning shot of this long. That's the long, psych mobile. The psych mobile. <laughs> Full psych. The race is done. We've talked to some other people. There's still people out on the course because some of the insane people are doing 200 kilometers. Uh, the award ceremony is not until like five, six, maybe seven o'clock tonight and uh i'm just not waiting around for that but it was a good time we'll see if we're gonna do the same distance or bump the distance up next year if you're looking for a kick-ass gravel race that is so far the hardest one terrain wise that i've ever seen sweetwater whiskey whiskey rebellion take a look for yourself before we finish this video i did want to make sure you knew that this event is part of the Rust Belt Gravel Series. There's a couple more events coming up this year. So if you like what you saw or you're interested in gravel racing, be sure to check out their schedule. Uh, you'll get to see some events in West Virginia, Ohio, and PA. Check out Sweetwater Bikes. They're the ones that put this on and organize everything. So thank you to them. Thank you to the sponsors and everyone who helped out and especially the volunteers. Without volunteers, kick-ass races could not happen. Well, Thanks for joining me yet again. Maybe we'll get to ride together. I hope to see you out there.